Today we will discuss the OSI model. Now OSI stands for the open source interconnection. Now where we use the OSI model? For example, take any telecommunication industry, take any two computers, one is client and one is server, to sending the data to router to router communication everywhere, what we need? The sending of data. And for sending of data, we need the conversion of bits from packets from segments. That is all about the OSI model. An OSI model contains seven layers. So we also call it as the layered architecture with seven layers. So we have the following seven layers. So at the bottom we have the first layer called the physical layer. Secondly we have the data link layer. Third we have the network layer. Fourth we have the transport layer. Fifth we have the session layer. Sixth one we have the presentation layer. And lastly the seventh layer is the application layer. We can also provide the numbers to these layers as the physical layer as the first and up to the seventh layer. Well, basically we use the OSI model in the telecommunication. So to understand the role of OSI model in our daily life, let us take the example of two computers. I am providing them the name as the C1 and C2. Now suppose these computers are connected with each other with some particular wire or coaxial cable or maybe any fiber optics cable. And we have the two users which are interacting with system number 1 and 2. I am providing the name of the users as the U1 and U2. Now here C stands for computer and U stands for the user. Now U1 is interacting with system C1. You may say that C1 is our sender and C2 is our receiver. That means U2 is receiving the data from C2 and data is traveling from C1 to C2 via some particular bus. Now where OSI model comes under play? At the user level, at the user side, we are only looking at the complete window, that is the GUI window, that means user is viewing the GUI window, but at the point of wire only bits are transferring, that means there must be any model which should convert all, all the GUI environment into the number of bits, so that wire can send the data, so from user to the wire, we only use the OSI model and the every layer have different different functions, so from user to the particular wire, we are using the OSI model. So that is all about the uses of OSI model. Now, what about all the layers? What are the function of all layers? Now we are going to discuss with our first layer that is the physical layer and their uses. Now we are going to study the physical layer. Now physical layer is very starting layer. Now we have the various characteristics of the OSI layer. So the first characteristic that it will provide the transmission mode. And transmission modes may be the simplex. Simplex that means there is a one side communication. That means only one sender can send the data. Other party can only receive the data. That is called the simplex. And second one is half duplex. There is two way data transmission in half duplex. But one at a time can send the data. Then third one is the full duplex. Both the parties can send the data at the same time. They can send and receive the data at the same time. That is called the full duplex. Now, the second function of physical layer is it is for the synchronization of bits. The third one we have the point to point configuration or line configuration. Fourth one it provides the physical topology to the connection. So we have various physical topologies just like mesh, star, bus, ring and many more topologies. So that means it also provides how to communicate with any other media and how to connect with the help of the topologies. It is also used for encoding and representation of bits. Basically the physical layer is working on the bit stream. So now to understand the physical layer function, let us take the example of a diagram. Now for example this is my physical layer. At the above of physical layer I have the data link layer and below the physical layer we have the transmission media. Now from the transmission media we have the particular bit stream which is coming from transmission media. So example uh, we have the data stream and the data stream is example 10101101 there is some header which is sent by the physical layer from the transmission media 
and we are going to use the header as 110. So that is all about the data. We are representing the data as the D and the header. We are representing the header as the H. So data and header is coming from the transmission media. Now the above layer, data link layer will only take the data and remove the header part. It will leave the header part and only take the data. So that is all about the header and the data and the functions of physical layer in the OSI model. Whenever we are talking about the H, H stands for the header, T stands for trailer, D stands for data. So if I say H1, here H stands for the header and 1 stands for the physical layer. If I am talking about T2, that means T stands for trailer and 2 stands for data link layer. Now if I am talking about the D5, now if I am talking about the D5, the D stands for data and 5 stands for fashion layer. So that is all about the various representation which we have discussed in the physical layer. We will discuss all these representation in further layers. So let's talk about the next layer that is the data link layer. So next we have the second layer called the data link layer. Now we have the various functions of this data link layer. That is first one the second layer and it is responsible for framing. Now data link layer divide various data streams into these small frames is called as the framing. In the framing concept, we add the header as well as the trailer to particular data. This is called the framing. Second thing, data link is used for physical addressing. Now what do you mean by the physical addressing? Now next we have the physical addressing. So we have the two types of addressing that is the physical addressing and the logical addressing. For so example, we have a particular network and we want to send the data in it, that network that is called the physical addressing. For that we require physical addresses and what about the logical addressing? For example, we want to send the data from outside that network. We need the logical addresses like the IP address that is called the logical addressing. And the next purpose of data link layer is flow control. Flow control is basically used to provide a particular control on the flow of data transfer. For example, I am sending the data at the speed of 5 Mbps. Then, whether it is going in particular 5 Mbps or more, maybe it is less or more, maybe it is 6 Kbps or the 3 Kbps. So, we are talking about the flow control that is to control a particular flow of data. The next feature of data link layer is error control. When we are sending the particular data, in that case, data packets may be lost. So we need the error control feature that is provided by the data link layer. Next one we have the access control. Access control is a feature of data link layer which provides the authentication and the authorization to the particular users so that what data we can send, which access we have over the data that is provided by data link layer. Then we have the hope to hope delivery. Hope to hope delivery that means example uh, we have a particular sender and the particular receiver and the middle router network elements between them we are sending the data not from the source destination we are first sending to the router then to the next router then from next router to the particular destination that is called the hope to hope delivery. So to understand the hope to hope delivery let us take the example of a diagram. So example we have three computers I am providing the name as a C1. C2 and C3. Now we have few routers which are going to connect with C1, C2 and C3. They have this specific name as R1, R2 and R3. Here R stands for router and C stands for computer. And the router and computer is connected with each other in particular fashion. So here C1 is our source and C3 is my destination. And we are talking about the hope to hope. And between C1 and C3, we have two hopes, that means R1 and R3. Why we have taken only R1 and R3? Because from sending the data from C1 to C3, we are going to follow the route as from C1 to R1, then R1 to R3, then R3 to C3. So whenever we are talking about the data traveling from C1 to R1 is our first hope, or called as the hope to hope delivery. 
we are also thinking as the x to h or hope to hope now again from r1 to r3 it is again called as the hope to hope and similarly it's for the r3 to c3 so that is all about the hope to hope delivery so now to understand the function of data link layer let us take the example of a diagram so this is my data link layer at the above data link layer we have the network layer and below we have the physical layer physical layer will send the data at above side and network layer will receive the data from data link layer now physical layer will send the data as well as header and the trailer as we know there is a concept of framing so the data link layer divides the particular data into frame that is header data and trailer so now we have the three parts which is coming from the physical layer to data link layer that is the first one is x2 that is the header part then we have the data at last we have the t2 here x2 represents x for the header 2 for the data link layer t for the trailer and 2 represent as the trailer of data link layer now physical layer is sending the complete data packet call the frame with header and trailer and data link will send only data it will remove header and trailer from particular frame and network layer will receive only data so that is all about the functions of data link layer now we'll discuss our next layer called the network layer so next layer we have the network layer now we have the various functions of the network layer so the first main function of network layer is routing routing means example we have various paths and from which path data will travel that is called the routing routing main principle is to select the shortest path and if the shortest path is not there we will find out the next is the less congested path so main function is to the first one select shortest path second one to select the second best path then we we'll provide the logical addressing So example we want to send the data from outside the network in that case we need the logical addressing or also called the ip addressing then we have the source to destination delivery or we also call it as the host to host delivery source to destination or host to host that means we are not going to consider the between element in any of the network devices For example we have one sender and the one receiver we will send the data directly no need to discuss about or focus about the middle routers so that is the host to host so to understand host to host or source to destination let us take the example of a diagram so we have the three computers same as before c1 c2 and c3 and they are connected with particular routers and c1 send the data to c3 with the help of router number r1 and r3 but here we have the source c1 and destination c3 so we are not going to focus on r1 and r3 now because that is source to destination delivery or host to host delivery we will just send the data from c1 to c3 directly so this is called as the host to host or source to destination delivery now to understand the function of network layer let us draw a diagram suppose this is my network layer above we have the transport layer and below we have the data link layer now data link layer will send the data as well as the header as three is added from the network layer so here we have the header as x3 and the data so now data link layer will send the h3 and the data and header is removed and only data is taken by the transport layer this particular combination is called as the packet so that is all about the network layer so next layer we will discuss is transport layer so we have various features in the transport layer the first feature is it is responsible for process to process delivery in the network layer we have discussed about the source destination as well as in the data link layer we have discussed about the hook to hook delivery now we have the process to process delivery that means we are going to send the data in deeper now so to understand process to process delivery let us take an example of diagram so example we have two computers i am providing them the name as c1 and c2 here c stands for the computer now each computer has the various processes in them for example c1 has three processes i am providing the name as p1 p2 and p3 
AP stands for the processors and again the C2 have two more processors providing them the name as P4 and P5 so these are the processors if any particular process for example P1 wants to communicate with P5 that is called the process to process communication so now P1 is interacting with P5 there is no need of any source and destination no hook to hook this one is called as the process to process delivery that is used by the transport layer now the next function of transport layer is service point addressing it provides a particular services by the help of the transport layer then we have the segmentation and reassembly now the segmentation and reassembly that means the transport layer is used to divide the various data into proper segments and when they send to the particular destination it reassemble them next we have the connection control it control the particular source to destination connection which is made by any of the administrator or maybe the computer so it is also used for connection control the next one is the flow control it also controls the flow of data being transferred next we have the error control if any error is occurred during the data transmission then that error can be controlled with the help of the transport layer so now to understand the various features and functions of transport layer let us take the example of a diagram so now here we have the transport layer at the above transport layer we have the session layer and below we have the network layer now we know that the transport layer is used for the segmentation so segmentation that means data is divided into various segments that means the network layer sending the data and the transport layer is dividing it into the segments so now we are taking the three segments now we have the three segments which have their header as well as the data the header is h4 in each of the segment here h stands for the header and 4 stands for it belongs to the transport layer now the rest part is the data in all the three segments now these three data segments are coming from the network layer but now the session layer will discard all the headers and it will only take the data now we can see that we have only data and data is taken by the session layer now transport layer divide all the data into particular segments and these segments have been sent to the session layer and the header is removed from particular segments and they are merged by the session layer we will see in the next session layer so we are going to discuss our next layer called the session layer so our next layer is session layer so we have various functions of the session layer the first main function is the dialog control that means example we have two systems and they want to communicate with each other so session layer provide a particular area in which both of the system can communicate with each other it may be possible in the form of half duplex and full duplex communication half duplex that means sender and receiver can send the data but one at a time full duplex that means both can send the data at the same time so next we have the synchronization so to understand the synchronization as well as the other feature of session layer let us take the example of a diagram so that one is the session layer above we have the presentation layer and below we have the transport layer so now as we have seen that the various segments were combined in the transport layer so to synchronize them is a part of session layer so again we have various data which was coming from transport layer and uh, with the help of header they are combined with particular data so now we have the four thing with us first one is the header h5 h5 here h stands for the header and 5 stands for it belong to session layer then three data these three are the data segments which was sent by the transport layer and as we know main purpose of session layer is to synchronize the data so that means we will synchronize all the data with the header so now these four things are combined and synchronized by the help of session layer so now they are combined with each other this is called as the synchronization of segments which is done with the help of session layer so these are sent by the transport layer but the above layer will discard the header and only take the data so we are now going to take only the data and discarding the header now you can see that we have only data now now that data is taken by the presentation layer now we have only the data which is going outside so that is all about the session layer next layer we have the presentation layer so next we have the presentation layer so presentation layer have various features the main feature of 
presentation layer is the code conversion or the translation. Translation of one language to another language is a function of presentation layers. Example, anybody understand English and some other person understand French. So that code translation or code conversion is the part of presentation layer. So next we have the encryption. Encryption means the conversion of normal text into the cipher text. That means we can save our particular data that is called the encryption. Next call the compression. Data can also be compressed with the help of presentation layer. And the lastly we have to check the syntax and semantic. Now the syntax and semantics example we are using the particular language then that language contains some particular syntax. That means if you are talking about the networking then if you are sending the data we have to follow some rules some standards that standards that rules that syntax or semantics are decided by the presentation layer so to understand the features and functions of presentation layer let us take the diagram so this one is my presentation layer above we have the application layer and below we have the session layer now session layer will send the data to the presentation layer and now it contain the header so header we have the f6 here it stands for the header and 6 stands for it represents the presentation layer then the last thing we have the data now the complete thing is sent by the session layer and header is discarded and only data is taken by the application layer so that is all about the presentation layer next the last layer we have the application layer so our next layer is the application layer the application layer provides the services to the user and below the application layer we have the presentation layer so the main function of application layer is to provide user interface user interface that means application layer provides particular protocols and the functions so that user can access with the OSI model basically the user can interact with the system with the help of the OSI model and the main at the top layer we have the application layer which provides the particular protocols protocols are the way by which user can communicate with any of the system so these are the set of rules. Next application layer provides the network virtual terminal. Network virtual terminal, that means the application layer provides a terminal just like that in which various protocols, various functions are combined virtually with the help of the network so that user can interact with the system very easily. So that is all about the virtual terminal, that is not the real one. So that's why we call it as the network virtual terminal. Next, the application layer has the main thing that is it provides the directory structure or the directory services. User can access the data from the system with the help of the directories and that directory structure is provided by the OSI model and the application layer. Nextly, we have the mail services. User can also access the mail with the help of the application layer of the OSI model. Then we also have the services just like file transfer, file access and management. Application layer also provides the services like file transfer, file access and management that means user can do every operation on the particular file. It can also delete, transfer and also manage all the types of records with the help of application layer. Now to understand the basic features of application layer, let us take the example of a diagram. So this one is my application layer. At the above of application layer we have the user and below we have the presentation layer. Now we have particular data following by the header which is sent by the presentation layer to the application layer. Here we have the H7 as the header. Here X stands for the header and 7 stands for the header is of application layer. And rest of the part is data. So that complete part is sent by the presentation layer to application layer. Now if the user is only have the meaning with the data. So the header part is extract out from the data and the data is sent to the user with the help of various protocols. So now we have the various protocols in the application layer just like X500, FTM, X400. So there are various protocols. That's why I am representing as the DAW. These FTM, X500, X400 are the arbitrary names of any of the protocols. So you may take any of the protocol. Now the header part is extract out and only data is sent to these particular protocols. Now the protocols are providing services to the user. For so example, we have various protocols in the application layer just like FTP, Telnet, DNS. So they are various protocols. So user are interacting with only protocols of the application layer. That means the protocols are providing services to user. 
So that is all about the OSI model. So you have seen that, that at above the application layer we have the user and the below physical layer. We have all about all the wires and the media. So at physical layer we have the bit stream, then we have particular frames, then packets, then segments, then after that they are converted to particular. So we have discussed about the OSI model. So you can see that the above the application layer we have the user and below the physical layer. We have the connection and their media, for example the wires, connection media. So at the physical layer we have the bit stream and data link layer, we have the frames, then at network layer we have packets, then above uh, transport layer we have the segments, then at session layer we have particular checkpoints, then uh, presentation layer we have all about the code conversion and translation and the application layer we are providing the service to the user. So that means from user to the particular wire, we have between a system and the system is operated by the OSI model. So that's where we have discussed about the OSI model. Thank you.